This is where Los Angeles comes from. In parts one and two, we talked about water over there, San Madre over there. Now in part three, we focus on the 32 acres that make up this park. But first, a graph. We'll call it Los Angeles population from 1781 to 1900. Let's put the decades at the bottom. Hmm. Something happens in the 1870s. LA only grew by 1,300 people in the first half, but grows by 100,000 in the second half? What caused this population explosion? The railroad. Before LA is connected to the railroad, it's not easy to get here. You can take a long boat ride or brave the desert. City leaders know that if Los Angeles is going to grow, they need an easy, safe way to get here. The city passes a referendum in 1872 and Los Angeles gives the Southern Pacific Railroad $600,000 and 600 acres of free land, including this park. Southern Pacific play us against San Diego, so we throw money at them. This park becomes LA's first train station. If you got on the train in 1877, this is where you first touch the ground. This train yard is a fuse that blows Los Angeles up. Formally, it's called the River Station. Historians will call it the Ellis Island of the West. Like the one in New York, this is where transplants get their first glimpse of the city. Now it doesn't take long for other railroads to get jealous and make their own connections to Los Angeles. Santa Fe and Union Pacific Railroads both start running trains to the growing city, breaking Southern Pacific's monopoly. Each railroad keeps lowering prices, trying to outdo one another. These actions culminate one day in 1886 when tickets from Kansas City to Los Angeles cost one single dollar people pour in. Southern Pacific eventually moves their passenger terminal a mile south in 1902, and the Los Angeles River Station switches from transporting people to freight. In the beginning, this train yard delivered people to Los Angeles. Now, it's delivering Los Angeles to the U.S. Wine, oranges, leather, Things made in Los Angeles are shipped out of this piece of land. Things start to slow down for the train yard and in October of 1992, it closes. The train yard had once been the first sight people saw when they got off a long train ride. But by the 1990s, it had morphed into an eyesore, an abandoned weed-strewn lot on the outskirts of Chinatown. In the final part, this park almost becomes a million square feet of warehouse space. 